How's it going everyone? This is Abe's Card Collection back with another Through the Mail Tuesday video. This week we had, you'll notice there's a card already on top, but we had seven returns, six envelopes, and including this Jerry Kuzman 1973 tops. The reason this one has already been opened is the envelope came back soaking wet and I did not want to leave it sitting there for a few days in its dampness and wanted to take the card out and if it was wet you know let it air out a little bit and dry up fortunately it was in a card saver and it did not get wet so good news there it did come back in 14 days and Mr. Kuzman takes a $10 donation to sign so really awesome return to start it off I also usually open some things up on a mail day Monday but this card came the same day too. It's a Glaber Torres Series 2 short printed rookie card. Um, this one also was absolutely soaking wet, but the eBay seller wrapped it in a, a lot of bubble wrap and stuff like that. So it was protected and showed up just fine. So heart skipped a little bit when I saw both of those, you know, the envelope and the, the bubble mailer all wet and stuff. So I frantically opened them so they could dry out and they were perfectly fine, both of them. So I got lucky there. But, moving on to the six envelopes now, I'm going to put them to the side and we'll go through and see who they are. Of course, I like to open up on camera just so I sh can share in that, that surprise with everybody else. But this one, first one's coming from St. Louis, Missouri. Let's cut into it and see what we got. Card saver, ultra pro college saver, that's kind of weird. I don't really send those out. Um, but Whitey Herzog, how about that? sent him two cards and I want to say $10, $5 donation a card and he signed both. 1987 tops, love that wood grain look. These I both picked up out of my uh, numerous monster boxes. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just going through looking for something and hit the Cardinals team and found both of these. So how about that? This one's in 1988. For some reason I thought it was like an 86 but no it's definitely not. It's definitely an 88. Um, but how about that? Hall of Famer Whitey Herzog. Have not gotten him before. Let's pull these up while I go to my spreadsheet and take a look. But one of the cool things about, or I guess one of the, the big things about Whitey Herzog is they always said, you know, his team's played Whitey ball in terms of they played really good defense, had really good pitching, and tons of speed. Guys like Vince Coleman and Ozzie Smith are out there playing, so strong defense, strong speed, and then of course great pitching. Which led to some World Series. So, how awesome is that? Hall of Famer Whitey Herzog. He also played in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s. I want to say his 57 tops is his rookie card for his playing career. Send it back in this Ultra Pro, uh, I don't even know if you can, yeah, Ultra Pro card saver. Which is weird because I don't use Ultra Pro card saver. So, I guess somebody else sent him a card saver and he, uh, I don't know, used the Ultra Pro and didn't use mine. Oh, before I cut into it. This one, we know who it is. It's Mr. Frank Thomas. The original Big Hurt. I have not sent to him before. But, this is really overloaded, so I'm being very gentle, cutting it open. But I've seen plenty of people get him back in the past, and thought it'd be cool. Oh, side note on the Whitey Herzog. Came back in 15 days, guys, and it is $5 donation per signature. So sent him $10 for both of those cards. But now on to the original Frank Thomas. Played in the 50s and the 60s, and I am... There we go. Alrighty. Put that over to the side here. I always write my dates on there just so I can get it into the spreadsheet and see just how long it takes. Very nice long letter here. I sent him one card, I believe. Whew. Look at this. The original one, how cool is that? Writes a nice little note down here, that's really cool. Like that Frank Thomas, the original one. And then he has, uh, he saw some photos and stuff like that too, it looks like. I'm gonna put this off to the side and get into it more later off camera. Here's my card saver and there's my 57 tops that I sent him with those Pittsburgh Pirates. How cool is that? Sends his business card here too, so if you guys want to send to him, check that address out. Um, let me put this down here. Look at how sweet this 57 Tops looks though. 
I was super excited to pick this card up for just a few dollars and really excited to get this return back. It came back in just seven days and it was a $5 donation. How cool is that though? I'm gonna put that here. He also sent another one. And I think I've seen yeah, other people do this. He's a, it's a, card, a custom card of him with the Mets. So pretty cool guys. Can't remember, I feel like I sent him maybe $10, $10 donation, but it's either five or 10. I'll have to double check on that one. For some reason I didn't write that down in my spreadsheet, but I do know I sent him something. But really cool return. Love getting that 1957 Pirates card signed. Moving on to our next one, Philadelphia, PA. Maybe it'll be a Philly. I've been sending out some spring training ones, but those wouldn't come from, uh, from Philly. They come from Florida if it was a Philly. Ooh, even better. How about that? Bobby Shantz, 1952 Tops card. He, of course, was the 1952 AL MVP. How awesome is that? I know a lot of people have gotten Bobby Shantz back before. Um, so I'm sure you, most of you all know all about Bobby Shantz. But one of the coolest things about him is, in my opinion at least, is that he's five foot seven or was five foot seven during his playing career, and they thought he was too small. And then all he did was go out there and win the AL MVP. And I want to say it was eight gold gloves over a very long career. And I thought it'd be awesome to get that 52 card signed just from his MVP season. Also have this 1952 Topps card here. Really cool. And of course, when he played for the Yankees, it was on the 59 one too. That 1960 card, I love these 1960 cards. They just pop with so much color. I, of course, I'm gonna have to put this 52 Topps card up front and I'm gonna have to move it front and center. I'm gonna go to my spreadsheet though real quick, guys, just so you know how long it takes. I'm sure you know it doesn't take that long, but let's see here. So it took seven days, and of course he takes $5 donations, which go, I believe, to the Salvation Army. So a really good cause. Didn't even notice this. He put the 1958 World Series champs on here. How cool is that with the Yankees? And then he put the 1952 AL MVP on here. I want to say he won, like, was it 24 games that year? Oh, it's not going to have it on here. Here we go. Let's go to the 59 tops. 1952 he won 24 games 2.48 era how awesome is that really love this card though it just looks so clean put that one right there if you haven't sent to bobby chance though send to him guys it's totally worth it every time him and Vern law are two guys i love to get how about this one from cleveland ohio Looks like it got a little wet here on the envelope. Another hard card. I think all these cards came in with uh, hard cards this week. And it's Hall of Famer 2013. Mr. Dave Robinson. I did not have his autograph in my collection. He signed a 1970 Tops and a 1972 Tops. How cool are those cards, guys? Wow. I... I haven't seen too many people get him back. I don't know if a lot of people are still send to him, but phenomenal linebacker for the Packers back in the day. This one came back in nine days from Cleveland, Ohio, which I believe is where he is from originally. And it is a $10 donation per card. I have seen people send $5 donations, and I think he'll sign for $5 donations. Um, I think he personalizes, though, too. And then like photos and mini helmets and things like that. It just, the price goes up and up. So, but totally worth adding these two Dave Robinson autographs to the collection for $10 donations each. Really awesome. Really clean signature with the nice blue Sharpie. Put those over here. Had some really good returns this week and we still have two more to go. Who do we have here? San Diego, California. Could say Ron Burgundy, but we all know it's not him. Even though it'd be really cool to get Will Ferrell's autograph. Another hard card. Continuing the run. Oh, wow. All right, Charlie Joyner. These came back really quick. Wow. All right. How about that second year card with the Bengals, guys? That 1973 Topps card. 
Then this really beat up 1986 Topps card. I don't know what I was doing. I was going through monster boxes looking for somebody and I saw this card and look at it. It's just all eaten up everywhere, but that signature just looks really good on it. And then picked this up not that long ago. I believe it's a 79 Topps. It is off of eBay for like a dollar or two. Totally worth it. I've had this 73 sitting around for a while. I thought it'd be cool to send him a couple cards. And this came back super quick. I'm going, if you can't hear me typing, I'm typing in the spreadsheet. Came back in 11 days. Wow, really quick. All the way across the country, we're gonna put this 73 Topps card. Where do we, we gotta cover somebody. Right. Sorry for Mr. Frank Thomas. This 1986 Topps card. Side note on the 86 top card, I don't know if you guys just collect autographs or cards too, but I have like a, an 8, graded 8, uh, Jerry Rice 86 tops rookie card. And I want to say I only paid like 20 bucks for it, and I, the prices on them are going insane right now. I don't know what's going on with these, like, because it's, I don't know, I know it's Jerry Rice and everything, but it's just... I don't know, I just don't see 86 Tops cards going for that much, but look it up. Shocked me. Anyways, back to Charlie Joyner, Hall of Famer. I think he, he averaged like almost 16 yards a catch in his career, which is absolutely amazing. This 73 Tops card looks nice. It's his second year card, 86, towards the end of his career, and then 79, kind of in the middle of his career there with the Chargers. We're going to put these over here. And we've got one more to return to look at, and it's from North Texas, Dallas, Texas. Um, no idea who this is because I feel like we get one or two returns from Dallas, Texas every single week. Oh, and we end the run on hard cards. There are none in here. Let's see what we got. Whoa. Oh, there's two in here. Okay. Buck Show Walter. And he signed them both. I thought this one was kind of funny. It's him with the Diamondbacks. Um, it has his like career record at that point, 385 and 432. I I don't know why I thought that was funny, just because I had a pretty bad losing record with them. He, of course, managed these Baltimore Orioles, these Diamondbacks, the New York Yankees. Um, who else did he manage? The Rangers. That's who I'm thinking of. Texas Rangers he also managed. I am totally thrown for a loop on this one, guys. I'm sorry. I'm looking through my spreadsheet trying to find Buck Showalter in here, and I found him. But, yeah, I remember him really turning around the Baltimore Orioles. Really... The thing about Buck Showalter, and he of course was an analyst on ESPN too, but the thing I always liked about him, or I don't know if I'd say like, but just respected about him, he always took these teams that weren't, I don't want to say that weren't that great, but they really weren't that great, and then a short amount of time helped him turn around. Um, did it most recently with the Orioles, and then once he left the Orioles, they just started being terrible again. Uh, kind of had some unfortunateness in terms of he... Helped turn around the Yankees, and then they brought in Joe Torre who, to win the World Series multiple times. Uh, similar fashion, I think, in Arizona. I don't think he was he was not the manager. It was Bob Brantley when they won the World Series in 2001 over those Yankees um, with Randy Johnson and Kurt Schoen, of course. And he was the one that helped build the team up, and then Bob Brantley comes in and wins the World Series. Didn't happen with Texas, although he did turn them to a pretty good squad with Mark Teixeira and Hank Blaylock and guys like that. Um, but yeah, really provides, he's a good analyst, I think too, on the TV side of things. So, but I definitely remember him from these Baltimore Orioles days. And when I first started watching baseball, he was the, the Diamondbacks manager. So really cool to get these cards signed. This one came back in 33 days and Mr. Showalter does not require a fee. So if you have any cards of his, maybe go get them. I think it'd be totally worth it. Yeah. Well, that's what we got this week, guys. I'll put these down here. We got a return from Mr. Buck Showalter. Two cards there. We got three from Hall of Famer Charlie Joyner. Really cool. We got two from the original Frank Thomas. Really like this 57 tops. We got three from the infamous Bobby Shantz. Really love that he had these nice inscriptions on here, the 52 AL MVP and then the 58 World Series champs. And this is the year they actually lost to the Pirates, so no inscription on that one. We got two from Hall of Fame manager Whitey Herzog. Really cool. 
stacking these cards up here. Two from Hall of Famer Dave Robinson. And then one from Jerry Kuzman. The other half of the infamous 1968 Tops Nolan Ryan rookie card. But thank you for watching, everyone. We got a nice stack this week. I hope you all are doing well and getting your own nice big old stack. So, and I hope to see you all on future videos. But for now, I bid you all adieu. Bye.